In this video, we're going to talk about the molecular orbitals of benzene and why it leads to what's called an aromatic uh, electron configuration. And then we're going to take a look at some similar molecules to benzene and determine if they too are aromatic. So with cyclic compounds, the molecular orbitals are a little bit different than they are for linear ones. We in fact find that we have degenerate orbitals uh, presenting when we have a cyclic structure. Degenerate, as we re may remember from uh, Gen Chem 1, means that they're orbitals of equal energy. And so the number of nodes is a little bit different here because of the uh, cyclic orientation of these orbitals. But suffice it to say that since we have a six pi electron system, we have three double bonds in benzene, so six pi electrons overall, we're going to make six different molecular orbitals. And because of the cyclic structure, again, the number of nodes is going to be slightly different than we would expect it to be. At our lowest energy level, we have no nodes. Uh, and I've kind of just shown uh, a kind of top down view of benzene. So if we look at our lowest energy one, it's all purple meaning all of the p orbitals are aligned in phase uh, on, the, on one side of the molecule. And on the other side, of course, they would be aligned as green. In our next energy level, we have two different degenerate orbitals, both with one node. And in either case, we're splitting the molecule in half, uh, where we're going to have uh, half of it be purple, half of it be green. As we go up in energy, we see that with uh, two nodes, we end up having uh, four kind of sections on each side of the molecule. And then at the very top, we have complete antibond reactivity, no nodes overlapping. It also works out such that if we take a look at where the normal energy for a p orbital is, that's that dashed line through the middle, we see that three of the orbitals end up with lower energy and three end up with higher energy. And we're going to see that with benzene, with six pi electrons, we'll fill in all of the bonding, I, that is to say, lower energy orbitals. And so this is the reason that benzene has such unique stability, because it is able to kind of reorganize its electronic structure and delocalize its electrons into molecular orbitals that have lower energy than the p orbitals by themselves. And so we're going to see that we're going to have a couple of ways of determining uh, if a molecule is aromatic or not. And we'll have some shortcuts. For example, we're going to start first by looking at what's called a frost diagram. In a frost diagram, we're going to see that we're going to have many of the same principles here um, that uh, essentially allow us to look at molecular orbitals without having to draw them. We can predict the energy of molecular orbitals. And by doing this, we're going to start by, by drawing a circle. So that's step one, draw a circle. We're going to then inscribe, that means draw within uh, our circle, we're going to inscribe the polygon representing our, our compound. So we're going to uh, draw in the molecule. And what's important here is we have to have one point of the molecule touching the very bottom. So uh, one point touching the bottom. And we're going to see that uh, as a result, we'll be able to draw these diagrams. So with benzene, that's a hexagon shape, right? So we're going to draw a hexagon in here as best we can, such that one point touches the bottom of the, uh, the circle here. Step three, we're going to draw in, draw a line halfway through, halfway up the circle. And that's going to represent our line of determining what's bonding and what's anti-bonding. If it's on the line, it's going to be non-bonding, by the way. So up here is anti-bonding. Down here is bonding. These are bonding orbitals. They're going to have lower energy. That line through the middle represents uh, the energy of the p orbitals by themselves. 
So lowering energy makes it into a bonding orbital. Increasing the energy makes it an anti-bonding orbital. And uh, here at the line, we have non-bonding. So those would be uh, lone pairs, that sort of thing, things that don't participate in bonding. And the last step here is we're going to uh, draw lines at each vertex, uh, representing the MOs, molecular orbitals. So each of these vertices here represents a molecular orbital. And since we have six pi electrons, we're going to go ahead and fill those in, in our Frost diagram. And lo and behold, we see that all of these are going to be lower energy than they would be originally, and so they're all in bonding orbitals. Therefore, this structure is aromatic. So if all electrons are paired in bonding orbitals, that means the structure is aromatic. And we'll take a look at this with a few other ones. So I would, uh, at each example, I would suggest pausing the video again and trying to do the Foss diagram on your own, following the steps above. Uh, and we'll see if we can't take a look at two molecules. Uh, we'll look at cyclobutadiene and cyclooctatetraene. Uh, we'll look at these two molecules and we'll see if they are aromatic or not. So go ahead, pause the video, do a frost diagram for each one, and come back and check. So for cyclobutadiene, we have to put something at the bottom. So since this is a square, we're going to have a kind of just rotated square, right? We're going to have our line through the middle. And in this case, it's going right through those vertices. So we're going to have our orbitals here. We have four electrons for cyclobutadiene. And here we see that we have two unpaired electrons in non-bonding orbitals. And so we're going to actually say that this structure is not aromatic. Uh, it is in fact what's called anti-aromatic. And we'll see some evidence for that uh, in a little bit after we do the Frost diagram for the cyclooctatetraene. So if we do this, let's see if I can't get this right. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Tough with such a big molecule, right? But we notice we have the same kind of pattern here. We have three bonding, three antibonding, and two non-bonding. We have eight pi electrons. So if we fill those in, other spin. And notice again, we end up with uh, having not quite paired uh, electrons within uh, only bonding orbitals. So not aromatic here, so we'll call this one anti-aromatic as well for now. We see that uh, molecules that are anti-aromatic, meaning there is actually an energy increase for making them into this kind of cyclic pi system, we see that in fact we end up with radicals, unpaired electrons, in the molecular orbitals of of these molecules, and that's inherently unstable. Something that is anti-aromatic is incredibly unstable, and molecules will do whatever they can to try and avoid being anti-aromatic. So we kind of have this idea of anti-aromatic in theory, but molecules will actually adjust themselves so that can, they can be what's called non-aromatic instead, where they will not even consider being aromatic. And we'll see how they might do that. We're going to see that uh, cyclobutadiene here is incredibly unstable. It's not able to be isolated except in extreme cases, you know, where you're producing 
a single molecule of it in the gas phase uh, trapped in frozen argon, right? Where it's incredibly, you know, very difficult to isolate. The reason for that is it, cause it will rapidly react with anything to try and avoid this anti-aromaticity. That's how cyclobutadiene avoids it. It also distorts its structure a little bit by actually going into more of a rectangular shape. It will try and push those orbitals away from each other so they are not able to overlap. We're going to see in just a little bit that having a complete overlap of, pi orbital, of p orbitals is necessary uh, for aromaticity to take place. So there's a little bit of distortion here. And with the cyclooctatetraee, it actually adopts kind of a, 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 a kind of folded shape to avoid the uh, air, anti aromaticity. So we're going to see again that one of the criteria for something to be aromatic or anti aromatic, I'm just going to draw four of the p orbitals here. Yeah, I'll draw six of them. We can see that these will have overlap, but we don't really have overlap between the ones on the bent side of the molecule. We can't really overlap these two. And so as a result, it's going to be preventing itself from becoming anti-aromatic by isolating its pi bonds. Remember, the whole point of benzene being extra stable is that it's able to delocalize over the entire molecule. And so the, the, molecule, the electrons are able to hop from p orbital to p orbital to p orbital to p orbital, all the way in the, in the circle. But with cyclooctatetraene, they move some of the, the atoms up so that this, this orbital overlap doesn't occur. And because the electrons can't go through, it can't be anti-aromatic, as we would expect it would be from the FOSS diagram. And so we're going to see that molecules have kind of a choice. They will do whatever is possible to avoid being anti-aromatic. And so in the next video, we'll take a, a closer look at some more uh, criteria for, for aromaticity, and we'll see a couple of other rules for being able to predict whether a structure is aromatic.